this episode, we train for the long haul in Erie, Pennsylvania. Well, the fire in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And strum a tune with some famous friends in eastern Pennsylvania. So sit back and relax, because we've got it made in America. This program is produced in cooperation with the Reader's Digest Association. Back in 1830, a manufacturer named Peter Cooper was having trouble convincing railroad owners to buy his locomotives to pull their trains instead of horses. Locomotives were new then, and few people believed that they'd ever replace animals. So Cooper set up a race between one of his locomotives and a horse. His machine was way ahead until the home stretch, when an engine belt slipped. Even so, it wouldn't be long before the locomotive, now known as the Iron Horse, became America's engine of progress progress that's still the most important product of this plant here in Erie, Pennsylvania, where GE builds locomotives that may never be replaced. By the mid-19th century, our growing United States finally extended from coast to coast. So in 1862, President Lincoln signed a bill empowering two railroads to lay tracks that would connect both sides of the country. Next to the abolition of slavery, the completion of our first transcontinental railroad was 19th century America's most historic achievement. This remarkable feat required brains, brawn, perseverance, and dynamite. The steam locomotives that rode these rails quickly became America's primary mode of transport, moving both people and freight. Over time, better locomotives were developed, and by the late 1950s, the old steamers were all but gone. Today's diesel electrics are marvels of power and efficiency. Which, of course, gets us back to GE. GE Transport is located in Erie, on the banks of the lake that happens to be Pennsylvania's only port. That's, in fact, why Lake Erie doesn't belong to New York, which already had plenty of waterway access. Erie is the state's third largest city. About a third of its jobs are in manufacturing, and GE Transport is its top employer. The GE site is a colossal 550 acres. Its 2,000 employees turn out about 800 locomotives every year. Actually, they can barely keep up with demand. As more than half of all the goods in this country travel by rail, they need a lot of choo-choos. Locomotive program manager Bob Thomas showed me around. Bob, what's the difference between a train and a locomotive? A train is the whole concept. is a locomotive with all the cars behind it. A locomotive is the engine. We've all seen these long, long trains. How does one engine pull all that There's weight? These locomotives have 4,400 horsepower, and that allows you with two or three locomotives to haul up to 150 cars of coal or grain. What we're going to see is final assembly, where all the components come together and are fitted onto the wheels. Next stop after that, the railroad tracks themselves. Each locomotive has over 200,000 parts, so a lot has already gone on before getting to this point. What gives the locomotive its incredible power is a diesel engine that turns an alternator generator which transfers electricity to motors located on each axle, six of them per locomotive. And it's just like uh, any electric motor that you'd find in a, a fan or, or anything else, just... It's just a lot bigger. The locomotive platform actually begins the assembly process upside down so that the cables, pipes, and wiring can be connected. It takes a team of workers two days to hook everything up. Now a crane that can lift 400,000 pounds turns the locomotive right side up and conveys it across the factory floor to station two, where the engine and the three cabs are attached. There's one cab for the engineer and conductor, one for the enormous radiator, and one for all the electronics and cables. 
The locomotive's 15,000 electrical connections require six miles of cable that have to be harnessed with incredible precision. Louise showed me how it's done. Oh, it's a good thing I swung by here today, yeah, huh? You would right. probably wouldn't have figured this out yourself. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Now, these bare wires over here... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I answered the question. Meanwhile, back at Station 2, they're about to lower the operator's cabin into place. That's where the engineer and conductor will do their jobs, hauling freight and people all over the world. And then I believe you're going to help set that cab on the platform, John. I'll have to go get a crowbar or uh, something yep. for leverage. And we'll get you one. All right. Okay. It's tricky setting this baby down perfectly. There, right on the money. Now it's on to the last station, where the traction motor cables and safety hooks are set. And speaking of safety, I asked Bob how often some muttonhead ignores the signal and is wiped out trying to cross the tracks ahead of a train. It happens every day. That's got to be horrible for the engineer. Yes. If you're going, what, 60 miles an hour, let's say. If all of a sudden you see somebody coming in front of you, how long is it going to take you to stop this train? It could be easily a mile. Because you've got all that weight behind it. Finally, it's time for the 200-ton, freshly painted locomotive to be carried over and set down on its waiting chassis. So the locomotive's coming to the truck right here. Right here, here we are. Hey, Roy, it's this one here. All right. Those flexible black hoses hanging down are air ducts that cool the traction motors. And that thick steel rod is the bolster pin. Once that's set, the engine's ready for final hookup. Well, it fits. They put it together the right way. Everything's going where it's supposed to be. Well, we always do, John. We always put them together right. Each locomotive comes with satellite equipment that allows GE Tex in the tracking center here to not only pinpoint every train, but also to diagnose and solve any system's problems. Technicians man the center here 24 hours a day, taking calls from engineers who need solutions fast. If the phone rings, uh, just answer it. So is anywhere in the United States, huh? If there's anywhere in the United States. Is that me? That Apparently, like they were a little short-handed. Yeah, hello, Ratzenberger, troubleshooting central. Can I help you? No, no, sir, I, I, uh, I don't know where your turtle is. At last, it was time for a test drive. Yes, sir. That new train smell. Tim Miller is our conductor. He's the one who has to stay awake. This alerter is a dead man operation. I have to reset that, or it would automatically remove power and apply the brakes. So every every two minutes you have to hit that button, or, or what happens? If the engineer doesn't acknowledge that, it automatically removes power from the locomotive and applies a penalty brake application, and it would stop the train. So that's the dead man switch? That is the dead man switch. So we're going 13 miles an hour. And it's forward, what it says right there, and we have uh, 2,990 gallons of fuel. This locomotive will burn about 260 gallons of fuel an hour at full horsepower. Oh, yes. It handles like a dream. Great rose garden there, Frank. Looking good. Sometimes uh, Mrs. Hunyadi will leave a sandwich hanging from the pole over here. Can you always pick it up? You right know? here, yeah. Nice kolbasi sandwich. I grab it right off of here. But it is the weekend, and she's asleep. I'd like to see any old Seabiscuit keep up with us now. 